Welcome to part 3 in our Adobe Connect training and how to use the host functions inside of the Connect meeting room. In part 1 we talked about the meeting menu command. In part 2 we talked about the remainder of the menu options. And in this part we're going to talk about the layout bar that's on the far right of a host menu and also about the attendees pod. So let's begin. On the far right of your menu are two more options. The first one is a help option which will give you internal help. Also it's there for your students. If you're having minor problem or you just can't remember how to do something very quickly then you can run into this help area and take a look. When you have more time, maybe not in the middle of a class, you could actually come in here and browse around a little to see what uh, they may offer you. Uh, remember that your students also have the same option, so if, if they're having trouble doing something or uh, need some help with troubleshooting, you can encourage them to go check out the help. Then the last option on this menu is your connection status. This is a similar to a light. It's a, a fake light actually. Uh, it should be green indicating that your connection to the internet is excellent at this time. Now this is an ongoing status so it could uh, degrade into yellow or possibly even red and if it does that you would probably notice that you are having some problems either hearing people or or whatever it is you might be doing. Maybe they can't hear you as well uh, or maybe the microphone seems to come and go. This is also true of your students. They would have this status light as well. So if you or one of your students are having trouble hearing other people or so on, have them check that status. If it's yellow or possibly even red, then the only thing I know that you can do is to exit out of Adobe Connect and re-enter again. Sometimes getting that new fresh connection to the internet helps out. If your students continue to have problems with it, then encourage them to talk with someone who can help them with their internet connection. It's possible that they're having trouble with that line that's coming in for them. Um, it definitely is an internet problem and really not an Adobe Connect problem. Let's talk a bit more about the attendees pod. It's the pod that's pretty important to you as the host. One thing that you can do in this in this pod is of course see who is attending, who's a participant and who's a presenter. But if you will just float your mouse over the top of one of the attendees, like in this case the participant, then you'll have another window that opens up to the left of that person and it gives you a list of things that you can do as the host. You could start a private chat with that person down in the chat box area. If you do that, then their name will appear on another tab right next to where it says everyone. And they would also receive a flashing tab with your name on it showing that you wanted to have a private chat with them. The next option down is to enable video in case they entered late and their video for some reason isn't enabled or they started up their camera late, whatever it might be, they just have put that here as a convenience for you. You could request a screen share. We're not going to actually talk about how to do that in this presentation, but what it allows you to do is something to think about for the future. You can actually make a participant into a presenter, have them share their screen, share their desktop perhaps, and then you can request to take over control of their desktop to show them how to set settings, how to run a certain program or whatever it might be. So it's a pretty powerful tool um, which you can use and we've already used it to help um, students and adjuncts set things up on their computer when it wasn't quite right for them. So that's something for down the road a little bit. The last two are the ones you're more likely to use and frequently to use is you can promote people or demote them. In this case we could promote our participant to into a presenter or even make them a host. Remember host has all power so normally when you're dealing with a class of students, you probably won't want to do that. 
unless for some reason you need to leave and um, the meeting and have somebody kind of take control of it. Very unusual for that. You can also uh, demote yourself. I don't recommend doing that, but it is a possibility for you to do that. So the most that you want to remember to do is when a participant is ready to make a presentation, you will want to promote them to be a presenter. That way they can control, they can first of all upload if they need to, uh, their own PowerPoint or PDF or whatever they want to share and then they can take control of of that part of the screen of sharing their work so it's a very powerful thing that you'll probably want to use I have been asked if like in Wimba if we could have breakout rooms inside of connect well yes we can as you can see there are three icons right below the attendees title uh, part of the pod and the middle one is the one for creating and starting um, breakout rooms. I have already clicked on that and you can see what it looks like down below there. One thing you have to decide when you go to the breakout rooms is do I want to click and drag each person in there individually or if it's pretty good sized class and I, I don't care to have them in a particular group I can actually have connect take the people and divide them up equally into the different breakout rooms the other thing that you can do is use the plus sign to add another breakout room so if you wanted to add a, add a fourth or a fifth breakout room you certainly could do that one way you can get people in as I said was to click and drag them down into the breakout room where you want them to be or as you can see here on this screen when you allow your mouse to hover over that person's name it lets you choose some options and in this option it's which breakout room do you want them to be in or do you want to put them back into the main meeting room let's see what happens when we choose to let connect automatically place people into the breakout rooms notice that I've added a third person into the classroom for this demonstration uh, obviously I couldn't ask connect to disperse just one person into multiple rooms so I've added another person and then I've selected all the people that I would like to have placed into breakout rooms and in this case you can see I've highlighted all three of us the two students and the instructor now the way that you do that is the same way you would select a list of things in other computer programs you would click on the first one and then take your arrow down point to the last one and while holding down the shift key you click while you're pointing at the last person it should highlight all the people in that range of names or in that list then all I would need to do is go over and choose my little crisscross um, icon I'm not sure what else you would call it other than a disperser icon so once you click on the disperser icon it will go ahead and place the people into however many breakout rooms you have set up so let's take a look and see what um, connect was able to do so here you can see that connect has dispersed my three highlighted people into my students went into two breakout rooms all by themselves and I was left in the main meeting room I can then take myself by either clicking and dragging or opening up the little uh, window and, and selecting which one I would like to send myself to I can move from breakout room to breakout room to see how people are doing one important point here though is that this is a two-step process once I place people into the breakout room look above there it says start breakouts so I haven't actually officially put them in there and let allowed them to get started yet so once I have them into the different breakout rooms I want to remember to come back up here click on start breakouts so that they can begin their conversations in their small group working on whatever it is that you've assigned them let's see what that looks looks like from the host point of view once you have placed the students into their breakout rooms and you have clicked on start breakouts you'll get this message at the top as do the students that says you are now in a breakout session 
However, for the host, you're allowed to broadcast a message to all of the people, all of the attendees that are in the, the different breakout sessions. To do that, I'll show you how to do that in a little bit, you'll just choose broadcast message from the attendees pod option menu. Um, when you are finished with the breakout and, or the time is up and you want to pull people back in, you can end the breakouts. You do that by either clicking here in this black box on end breakouts or down below the main meeting area in the attendees pod where it says end breakouts. Once you end the breakouts, the people remain in the breakout room until you bring them back. Let's see how that works. Here I've decided that it's time to get the people back out of the breakout rooms and put them back into the main meeting room so they can report back to everyone what they discussed during their um, breakout meeting time. And I've done this in one fell swoop, so to speak, by going to the first person in the first breakout room and clicking on that person and then scrolling down to the last person's name in the last breakout room and do a shift click. It'll highlight everybody that's in all the different breakout rooms. Then you'll get this little box on the side that'll open up allowing you, telling you how many people are selected and then allowing you to place them either all into one of the breakout rooms or more likely bring them all back to the main meeting room. So it's a very easy way of moving groups of people around. This shows the attendees option menu opened up so that you can see all the many things that you can do um, concerning the attendees right from this pod itself. You can see here where you can change their role again. You can uh, remove a person if you need to remove them. And, and the only time I've really had to do that is when someone actually got themselves into the class twice. And then it'll have their name and it'll have their name a second time with a two after it. Um, then you, as the host, can come in, highlight that person that's in there too many times, and remove that selected user. You can mute all users. If you're having a lot of echo problems, you might want to do that. You can clear everyone's status if everyone has their hands up or whatever. So you can see all the different things you can do here. The one thing that it doesn't show you here, because right now I don't have anybody in a breakout room, is the very option I had talked about is broadcasting a message to all attendees who are in a breakout room. But if they were sitting in breakout rooms and you clicked on this option menu, you would be able to find that option here and click on it, type a message, tell them, you know, five minutes to go or something and, and then broadcast that out to all of the rooms. Uh, notice that every one of the pods does have an option menu. The one down in chat, you can see that pretty clearly here. And there's one up there for the documents or the share screen. And there's one for video. There's one for every pod. Um, and those are, according to that pod, you know which options, obviously, you need to be able to do. But all of them will have the hide option, which would be to close up that pod, or the maximize option, which would make it the full screen. So just take some time once you get your own classroom look through and see what other controls as the host that you might have. Let's move along. Now just to show you how the different layouts appear some of them are standard and you will be able to see them right away others maybe I've created or changed a little but just to give you an idea that they do look different um, I've clicked off of the documents layout and clicked onto the desktop layout. The desktop layout allows me to have a much larger share screen as you can see and that would be good for sharing a PowerPoint or perhaps wanting to show a video or something like that um, or others maybe wanting to share their presentations. Whatever you want to do it just gives you a larger portion of the screen devoted to sharing and but it does keep the attendees in the chat area on here for you. Let's take a look at the next one. The next layout is set up, kind of pre-set up, for a whiteboard use. Now you can use a whiteboard over top of any of your other uh, sharing areas. So as a host you can 
open up these tools and use them to mark up your PowerPoints or you know a PDF or whatever you might want to do but in this case I just wanted to have a blank area where I could type some things up on on the screen as perhaps we're brainstorming or something like that um, on this case in this case all I did was click on the T for text typed in a little message and then over on the right hand side I could have that highlighted and choose what font I want it to be, how large I want it to be, the color of it, and so forth. So just take some time to take a look at this this tool and see how you might be able to use it for your classroom. This is kind of a fun option, one that we really wished we would have would have had in Wimba, and that's to be able to show video. Uh, you're able to show videos that are either flash based or MP4 within Connect. This one happens to be one that uh, an app was designed by other users with Connect being an open source. Other users can actually develop new things and then make them available for the rest of us to use. So someone connected something called con someone created something called ConnectTube and it's used to help find and display YouTube videos. In this case I've typed in a search uh, for Campolo and hit go. It very quickly goes out and and comes up with a list. You can scroll through your list in this case of anything that has to do with Tony Campolo. Find the one you're looking for and then click on it to show it to the students. So let's see what that would look like. Here I have chosen one of Tony's uh, video podcasts and wanted to show that to all of the students. Once you've clicked on the one you'd like to show them, just as in YouTube, you'll get that big red arrow in the middle of the screen. Do not use that arrow. Uh, what it does is it, it will start the thing running and, and students could start it running also. However, you can't get it to shut off. Um, you can't get the audio to shut off, I should say. So I've been known to um, start the videos like two times or three times, you know, just a few seconds after each one. And then, of course, all of the sound gets jumbled together and everyone's hearing one thing on top of another, so learn from my mistakes. Uh, use the controls at the bottom for play, pause, and stop. Um, that will just keep things a lot cleaner for you and fewer headaches. And the last layout that I have in my layout area is one for video discussion. This one, uh, even though it seems shocking to me right now to have my face staring at me so large, uh, would allow you to actually have a nice large area where an everyone who has their webcam enabled, you'd be able to see their uh, webcam pictures instead of little thumbnails, you have a, a little nicer uh, size of box for each person, depending on how many you do have d using their webcams. The only downside of using a webcam is that if your internet connection tends to be a little bit slow, you'll notice that the webcams um, will kind of freeze on you every once in a while. Um, so that might be an individual person's decision whether they really can even use their webcam or whether they can view everyone's webcam at one time. It takes up the most uh, of your internet connection to actually use the webcam along with the microphone. So just have to judge that by what kind of connections that most of your students might have. But it really turns out to be a nice way of having a discussion um, online with, with all of your students. It really works out nicely. Let's go now and see how we might be able to design our own layout. I had told you that we can create our own layouts and let me show you very quickly how you can do that. There's one of two places you can go. Up onto the layouts menu option, there's a create a new layout option for you in there. Or down on the lower right hand side below your 
uh, list of layouts, you have two icons. One is for settings that you have in your layout, and the second one's the one I want to talk about, and that one is the little plus sign, and that's for adding a layout. Once you click on the plus sign, you get this little message here in the center, and you need just to fill it out to create a new layout. You could either create a new blank layout, which I have done before, but it gives you an actual black screen, and you have to add each pod and size each one the way you would like, like it to be. You're welcome to do that. Or you might choose the second one, which is duplicate an existing layout and that's the one that's a lot quicker because then it lets you use this drop down arrow to choose which of the layouts comes close to what you want you choose to duplicate it and then down below you enter the name for your new layout type in a new name for it and click OK and you will have your new layout created which at that point is a duplicate of one you already have and allows you to go in swap different pods out maybe size them a little differently whatever it is you had in mind that you wanted to have a new layout for so try it out it works fairly well now you can see that I have created a new layout it's listed over on the right hand side as copy of dot 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 it is a copy of the video discussion I'm still in the original video discussion. You know that because it's it has the little blue highlight on it. If you notice, there's X's in a circle um, up in the top right corners of all the other layouts except for the one that you're in. That allows you, in this case, my new one is also highlighted with a little dotted yellow line. It allows you to get rid of any layout that you really don't want. So if you try one out you don't like it, you can get rid of it. So all you would really need to do is click on that little X in the top right hand corner. Look ahead to see what, what that would look like. And in this case you can see I've decided I really don't need uh, a duplicate of video discussion area. So I've decided to go ahead and delete that. I've clicked on the little red X it comes up then allowing you to delete that layout and as you can see the duplicate layout for our video discussion area has been removed that is pretty much all we wanted to talk about concerning the layouts at this point you can have a lot of fun designing them and there will be cases where you'll want to have duplicates of things made so just get into your meeting room and give it a try okay we've made it to the end of part three uh, these three sessions we spent talking about how to use the host meeting um, menu and the host screen to our best advantage. We talked about how to use all the options underneath meeting, how to use the other menu options going across the top, and in this session we learned how to work with the different layouts, a little bit anyhow, at least how to switch among them, and also how to create a new layout if you wanted to do that, and I talked about how to use the attendees pod which is really important for classroom management. So uh, the next thing that we really need to talk about then is how to create our own meeting rooms. Um, we will want to do that so that you can create a meeting room for any of your courses. You can usually just reuse that meeting room while you're in that course and that way the next time you teach the same course you may already have some things uploaded in there and it'll take a minimal amount of time to uh, get ready for the course. Uh, the next thing that we will do then also is talk about how you record your meetings. We talked a little bit about it, but not really how to do that. And then how to, can we find the information about a meeting that's been recorded and get that out to the students. Remember, you'll record a meeting in a couple of different reasons. One would be to pre-record an introduction to some topic or perhaps to your syllabus. Uh, then secondly, if you're having an a synchronous meeting with students not everyone can make it so if you record that meeting uh, and later make that recording link available then all of your students will have the opportunity to see it so why don't you look for that next and you'll see that video listed in among the other videos that for training on connect and I'll see you then goodbye for now